you're, yeah. you're showing everyone the bumps, the bruises, the successes along the way through your YouTube channel, and Instagram. Yeah, and you know, I because I, I wanted to look for it. I was looking for that myself to see, like, all right, let me see what it really looks like. A lot of people put their goals out there, but to like actually document it and show the ups and the downs, the bad months, the bad days. Like, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see the bad days where I'm like on, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God, I hate this. I hate this. Yeah. Hey guys and gals, Trevor here with Carrot, and I uh, got a guest with me today, and uh, I'm crazy pumped to introduce you to this guest, first of all, because we had a chance to talk on the phone when I was down in Sedona, uh, Arizona, heading to my mastermind. Now, when we record this, he's down at, back in Phoenix down there at a different mastermind, which we'll probably chat about here in a bit, but uh, before I introduce you to Max, um, one thing that I'm passionate about, and you guys who are our, in our audience know this, I'm looking at my core values poster right now across the across the thing. Uh, one of my favorite core values from that is be a beacon of positivity and possibility. And I so get attracted to people who are out there being that beacon for other people who are out there doing great things, pumping people up, showing people what's real, not not sugarcoating the stuff that's that's bad, but just like really living and being a positive influence. And Max is one of those dudes that jumped out to me probably a month and a half to two months ago on Instagram. So I'm crazy excited to have you on our podcast on the Carrot Cast, but uh, welcome on into the cast, Max Maxwell. I appreciate it, Trevor. Thanks for having me. Dude, so we're, we're going we're gonna to talk about your story. We're going to talk about you know what you're doing right now. We're going to talk about how you got there and all those kinds of things. Um, but before we, we dive into, oh, let's do this. Let's start, let's start with where you are right now. Like give people context for where you are in your business and life right now. Where do you live? What's your business look like right now? Uh, what's your family look like? That kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm in, I'm in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. So just a little small dot there in North mm -hmm. Carolina, in between Raleigh and Charlotte, which most people know. Um, Winston-Salem is the, the home of tobacco. It's home of the RJR Corporation. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of history there. A lot of banks were started in our area because of the influx of cash because of tobacco was so popular back then. Mm. Uh, so some of the big banks started in Winston-Salem and have moved to other bigger cities, you know, like Charlotte and stuff. But, you know, I'm mainly a wholesaler. Um, I wholesale price probably about 95 percent of my business is wholesaling. A little small percent of it is actually doing the actual flips in itself. Um, so just, you know, wholesaling right now We're 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 approaching, you know, I I'm about, we're doing a close to between, you know, 40 and $50,000 every month. And we're climbing to that hundred thousand dollar month. And that's kind of where my journey is now is kind of documenting that, that journey to get where we want to get. Dude. And, and so you mentioned documenting your journey and that's so powerful because, um, you've got a great YouTube channel, first of all. And I saw one of your latest Thanks. videos up there is something about your know, hundred thousand a month wholesaling or something like yeah. that. And it's, it's so cool because oftentimes people get locked into, um, in, into a certain goal or man, I've got to get to this or whatever. And those are always amazing. I love the, I love the hundred thousand a month goal. Um, but also I love the fact that you're not just like putting it out there and then not showing behind the scenes of what's happening and then magically come out the other end and, Oh, now I'm making this. You're, yeah. you're showing everyone the bumps, the bruises, the successes along the way through your YouTube channel, and Instagram. Yeah. And you know, I, I, cause I wanted to look for it. I was looking for that myself to see like, all right, let me see what it really looks like. A lot of people put their goals out there, but to like actually document it and show the ups and the downs, the bad months, the bad days. Like if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see the bad days where I'm like, on <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God, I hate this. I hate this. Yeah. But you know, it's overall, I, I, I just like document it. it. It was a little bit uncomfortable for me at first because you got this camera that you're holding around and caring for yourself. And, mm -hmm. but it became more relaxing because the, what I was putting out, people were responding to and, and they were like, Oh man, I'm so glad you did that. And if I get here that one time for a whole video I put out, it makes it worth it. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's so big. And that's one of the things that fires me up here at Kara is is yes, we, we do have a product that we put out and we're passionate about being the best in the world at it. Like it, it's a game and we wanna be the best in the world at it for our clients. But at the yeah. end of the day, the thing that pumps me up out the most, or pumps me up the most is when I get those emails or those Instagram messages or the Facebook messages from our clients, which I get them almost every day, where the client says, hey, this episode of the, the, of the podcast, you said this and it really hit me and changed the way I'm tackling my week. Or yeah. you, this right here, the way that you're, you know, this, using this tool got me X result and you're know, using carrot. I mean, I got one you know, just the other day from a client in, uh, in Tennessee and he sent like this whole thread of what was happening with that deal. And at the end of it, he's like, 
this is why I do it, man. The, the homeowner was so happy that we were able to help him. She was on cloud nine. And he like, he's like, that makes me happy. I'm like, dude, yeah. that makes me happy. So I love it. So let's, let's kind of circle back. And, and so you're in North Carolina, uh, you're doing mm -hmm. you know, 30 to 50,000 a month in wholesale. What, what do you have a team? Is it just you? Do you have other people working with you? So that, that's part of my document and my journey. So as a single, like, on you know solopreneur mm -hmm. i was doing between 20 and 25 a month and it was like oh okay this is kind of exhausting yeah. so you know i was reading more and more and learning how to build out a team and uh so that's that's where you see the documented journey is how we're building out the virtual assistants which i don't like to use that word virtual assistants mm -hmm. i just call them employees they just work remotely yep um so you know my employees work in different countries and, um, you know, they work, all of them work 40 hours a week for me. I have four of them now mm -hmm. and you know, it's, it's excellent. So that, that part growing the team like that has been great. And I've brought on a business partner. He's not full time yet, but he's going to be get, get full time. He's actually an attorney and he's wanting to get away from what he's doing. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, he's going to come on full time. So I have somebody there with me in the office to like, you know, bounce ideas off of. But to be able to have my remote employees, it's it's changed my business the way. That's why I'm able to be at this mastermind now and closing yeah. deals while I'm sitting here learning. Dude, so you, you you use the phrase remote employees, and I want to kind of key in on this a little bit because I know as we're growing carrots, so we're 16 full time employees now, and we probably have another four to five contractors who put a lot of their time in in with us, independent contractors. We're going to be hiring another few people here shortly. But we started with just one person, then we add another, we add another, and a lot of people have asked us, hey, where can I find virtual assistants? Where can I find VAs? Now, VAs obviously are really valuable. Uh, maybe we'll dig into where, where you've been able to find yours. But the thing I love about what you said, dude, was it's a simple but subtle but powerful mindset shift when you said remote employees. So mm -hmm. number one, why do you say that? And number two, what do you? what is the difference that you feel when you associate someone as an a remote employee versus a virtual assistant. How's that changing your mind? Well, for me, you know, because I have friends that work in Silicon Valley and work in the tech world, and mm -hmm. they work they work for Google and some of the big companies, and they're in the office probably one day a week. Yep. Right, and they're still considered a Google employee. Mm -hmm. And I think the the connotation in in the real estate world of, of VAs, a lot of people have had has not had success with using virtual assistants. So that word in the real estate industry has become good and bad, but more bad than good. So I just said, listen, I have remote employees. You can call them what you want, but I, they're actually like my family. I get on once a week calls with them and we yeah. talk about my business. I say, listen, you guys are, if I succeed, you guys succeed. So I want the actual feedback from you guys because you're on the front lines. You're answering the phone calls. You're making the phone calls. I want to get your feedback so I can adjust and become a better you know, CEO and a better person that manages what goes on. Dude, and that's, so that's a subtle mind shift. Oh, I so love it, man. Because that to me is the big thing right there. Because you're going to treat that person differently than it's if it's a VA. You're, a VA, you're probably sending tasks to, hey, offload that in the VA. But your remote employees, they're a part of the growth. They're a part of the core team. They're a part of like what exactly. makes you guys, you guys. And a simple thing in the interview is, hey, what does your future look like? What do you mm -hmm. want to be doing? Where did you work at before? What are you What are you heading to? Am I just a stepping stone? Okay, well, how can I help? Since you're helping me, how can I help you hmm. reach your goal, right? At, at the same time, and you get to know, and just because they're in the Philippines, they're human. Yep. They're just, you just can't go knock on our door next door, so they're human. <laughs> and I just, it, it's no different. They're, they're, they're friends, I'm Facebook friends with them, I'm Instagram friends with them. They know what's going on in my life, hmm. you know, know what's going on in their life. So it's just, you know, we're, we just work together. So anyone listen to this that has VAs, please, please, please rewind what you just heard. And that subtle mindset shift is gonna be so powerful for you and for your team because if you can get people who are truly committed to you and your your company, like the way that Max just mentioned, that's how you do it. So rewind this, re-listen to it, and uh, inject that into your business. So I'm gonna go all the way back here, Max. So what were you doing before you started doing real estate? What was your previous career? And kind of what was that moment where you're like, dude, this isn't working, I gotta do something else? Yeah, you know what? So I'm, I'm a first generation American. My parents are Jamaican. Mm -hmm. And um, so I used to spend some time with my my uncle in Hopskinville, Kentucky, mm -hmm. and he owned rental rental property when I was younger. So in the summer, I would go up to Kentucky and 
you know, hang out with him and clean out rental properties, go fix toilets and collect rent. And it was like, oh, my God, you own four houses on this this, this street. It doesn't even make sense to me. So he doesn't, I don't even think he knows he's passed away now. But I don't even think he knows how much he influenced me to get into you know, actual real estate. Mm-hmm. And so when I was 17, I went off to the Air Force. You know, I did my stint, my term, and, you know, I, I learned a lot of discipline. It molded me at a, at a young age. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I just, um, when I got out from my active duty, I got my real estate license. And, you know, I was doing pretty well. This is all pre-crash. Um, I was doing pretty well. Mm-hmm. and But I felt like I was more to it than this because what I went to school for wasn't what I seen my uncle doing. Yeah. He didn't have a real estate license. So I got more into the, I left that and got more into the investment side of things and did that. And then the real estate market um, went for the South. And and then I went off to um, LA and traveling and I worked in the marketing world for so long for some of the big companies like Verizon and, and you know, Google and stuff like that, just doing marketing for them, experiential marketing really. And, um, when I got tired of that, I was really, my, my real estate itch was still there. Mm-hmm. And I decided to, you know, kind of come back to North Carolina in 2015. And uh, I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to do some real estate. And, and then I heard about wholesaling and stuff like that. And I just started studying it. I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. And I tried it. First month made 21 grand. I was like, okay, <laughs> you don't tell me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so we got to dig into that right there. So 2015, you came back. You decided to dive back into real estate, started learning about wholesaling. How far, how, how long was it between the time you moved back and started digging into the research side of it before you had that month? So I started a technology company, which was in between that. So I started, I created an app okay. back towards the experiential marketing. Um, I still have it today. It just didn't work out as fast as I thought it would. Mm-hmm. And then the real estate bug bit me. So about nine months after I got back to North Carolina, then I started actual wholesaling. Mm. And when I jumped into it, I jumped into it, to it head first. I mean, there was no other income coming in. It was like, ah, you, it was like, you got to make it. So driving for dollars and reading, listening to podcasts and tuning in to you guys. I mean, I think, mm. I actually think, I actually, so I'm a big believer in branding and presence. Mm-hmm. So my first two purchases was, sorry, three purchases, a domain name, some business cards, and I designed my own logo, mm-hmm. and then my carrot site. <laughs> and it was, I, because I had to have a website on my business cards. Yep. So it was, it was just, I just said, I'm gonna do it. And uh, went out and made my first deal, and first two deals in three weeks of starting. And uh, in, in, in one month, I had 21 grand of closed checks. And I was okay, I need to read. <laughs> sold, <laughs> sold. Dude, so how so, how those first few deals come in? Where'd they come from? So I went into a neighborhood we grew up in because my uh, we moved from New York into Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We moved to a neighborhood called Salem Woods. I was just driving around. It was actually an old street I lived on. Okay. Um, drove by the house. The grass was high. The bushes were high. All stuff that I was reading. Hmm. Um, and I, I found the uh, went to the tax records because I was in real estate. I knew how to work that part of it. Hmm. Went to the tax website, found out that the person was dead. Okay, man, I don't know what to do then. Then I got introduced to probate. The ladies at the probate office were pretty helpful. They told me, show me this, and you can actually see the file of who owns it. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. And you can see the executor. I called the executor, picked up the phone, and boom. She's like, oh, you know what? I was actually thinking about selling this property. It's been vacant for a year because I try to be a landlord. Really? Uh, I don't. I, so I knew about pricing and stuff, and I just threw out a number. Hey, would you take 30 grand? She was like, mm, let me call my husband. She calls her husband. She's like, well, he's, he works on the road, so it could be back. It could be a few days before he gets back. She calls me back in 20 minutes. It was like, would you do 40? I said, how about this? You owe back taxes. I'm going to make sure you walk away with 30 grand, okay? Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to pay the back taxes. So it was a total offer of like 38. Yeah. And then I signed it. I, whatever I signed it for, I made 14 grand. And um, I sold that via basically a Facebook post. <laughs> and... Uh, People were hitting me up, and that weekend I had to, had it assigned. I was like, "Oh my god, this is crazy, dude!" So the person who who bought it, it w- w- was that just someone who was a Facebook friend, or were you inside of a group, or kind of what happened? There? I put, so in my area, we got like this Forsyth County yard sale group. Okay, I was just like, I was out there cleaning up the yard. I paid a guy fifty bucks to take the stuff out of the house, and uh, you know he he was there doing. I started taking pictures. So let me just see what happens. I just started getting contact. Matter of fact, before I even left the property, people were driving by. I was like, "Oh, I've seen this on, <laughs> I've seen this on Facebook." And I was like, "Oh wow!" 
guy calls me up and he's like, hey, I'm in, I'll be back in town Saturday morning. I said, perfect. Mm-hmm. I, I called, he went to go look at it and he was like, hey, I want to bring my wife back Sunday morning. She came back Sunday morning and said, it's a deal. Hmm. I was like, all right, <laughs> cool. Let me, go find a, let me go find an attorney real quick because I don't know one. And uh, it was that simple. We closed that deal and I get on Craigslist the same weekend. Mm-hmm. Guy's selling a house. He wants 10 grand. I'm like, 10 grand's got to be a piece of crap. Mm. He just wanted out of it. He wanted to go. He, he bought a house 10 years ago, never fixed it up like he thought he was. His wife was like, listen, you said you were going to do this. You didn't. Yeah. You owe me one. And uh, he said, listen, I just want to get rid of this. I already bought my trailer over here. Huh. I said, I'll, I'll give you 10 grand. I sold it within the week for 17,000. So I made, you know, 21 grand in a couple weeks. Dude, sweet. So, so both of those were hustling, right? I mean, it didn't require you to send out direct mail, didn't require you to really buy anything. So it's real hustle. Anybody knows me, I hate direct mail. I don't send any direct mail in my business. And last month we did 62 grand. Yeah. So I don't, I'm just not a big guy. I don't like one, 1% returns on anything. Mm-hmm. So, so let's kind of bridge that gap for people. So your first couple of deals were uh, Craigslist was number two and then just driving for a dollar. You saw a house with big grass, ended up being a mm-hmm. probate deal. So you got that done. Where, where, where did you then focus to then grow the business? Because you did 62K last month. So something happened in that, in that range. Let's break yeah. apart what, what happened. So you look, at, you look at my first deal and I, I reverse engineered it. Mm-hmm. Luckily, that short time that I was in, the, the uh, technology world, I, I learned reverse engineering. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, what did my biggest wholesale deal to yet look like? It was it was tall grass, mm-hmm. absentee owner, uh, a probate, and you know, so I was like, okay, let me just figure out. So it had a code violation, it was behind on taxes, and mm-hmm. it was a probate. So okay, let's just focus on that. <laughs> let's go get the tax list, let's, let's go learn about probate, and, uh, you know, let's let's go do everything we can to, to become the master in our county. And that's what I tell people that mm-hmm. that's on my Facebook and I do like an Instagram live. And I tell people, I say, listen, if you want to know how to do exactly what it is you want to do. Sorry, I got to know. If you want to know if if you want to if you want to if you want to become the best in your area, you need to become an expert in your county. Mm-hmm. Point blank. And once you become an expert in your county, then you're going to build your business around how your county works. Hmm. So, so, so for you, so you had those three things. Was there was there a list that like combined them all, or do you just kind of have to cross check? Well, you had to cross check the code violations with the this, with the that. They're all different lists. Yeah, they're all different lists. But you'll be surprised how when you cross check them, that this one's fine up on the multiple. So we call that now. There's a term for it. It's called stacking. Okay. We, the ones that are stacking, this is the one that we immediately go after first. Mm. And and it, and it usually pans out to be a better deal. Probate, behind on taxes, and usually has code violations. Or you get two of those three, you got you know you're going to have a good deal. So then from there, are you still picking up the phone and calling? Are you sending direct mail at all or no? So no direct mail. Um, uh-huh. Our business model, um, we, we create our own lists. So that's okay. one. Every so I be, I'm an expert in the county. I know when things start to become foreclosure. I know when probates come in that whole nine. Mm-hmm. So we create our list one. Uh, number two is we have bandit signs. It's typical. It works. It's effective. Mm-hmm. And um, we do PPC. Mm-hmm. And uh, our big one is cold calling. So all of those lists that we pull, yep. I have my uh, my remote employees. They make those phone calls for me okay. and make about two to three hundred phone calls a day. Hmm. And they're there to gauge if somebody is interested in actually wanting to sell a property. And that's it. Dude, I, I love it. And this is one thing I think a lot of people, we, we oftentimes tend to overcomplicate certain things, right? Especially when you're <laughs> yeah. getting started in something. Or right now with Carrot, you know, we're, we're in a really, really cool part of the business where we can, we can help our clients even more and really up level. And you overcomplicate stuff. And when you hear someone explaining it this way like that doesn't seem that complicated dude right but you just gotta do it you just gotta put the system together and that's why i said if you learn how your county works um then you're gonna just build your business around what your county does Mm. and i know when foreclosures come in and so on and so forth i know how i become it i'm so good at my county that if one of the ladies wanted to take the week off i could fill in their position down there and and give them vacation time and that's (laughs) that's how it is you got to become an expert. So, so giving people a little action item there. So people might be going, well, okay, cool. What are the best ways I know my county? 
if you were landing in a new city today that you didn't know, what would you do to become an expert in that county? I'm going to spend my time at the courthouse because, yep. you know, a lot of people buy lists. There's many different places you can buy lists from. Well, where did the list come from? The mm. data has to start somewhere. So you're buying a list from a company. I live in North Carolina. You buy a list from a company that's in California. Well, they're way across the country. Mm-hmm. That data started from your courthouse. Yep. So go to your courthouse and just say, listen, can you can you and just go there? Somebody as a student that some a lot of people have the tendency to want to teach. So go there as a student and say, hey, look, I need some help to kind of understand how probate works. Mm-hmm. And they're, you're going to find somebody in there that's just like, you know what? Their, their teacher hat turns on and they're like, you know what? Come here. Come here, baby. I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, you know, how, when does it enter? What's, what's going on? And you'll learn so much. And after a while now, I mean, I just walk into the probate office I, all the way into the back room. They don't mm-hmm. need, I say, hey, how you doing? They know me. You know, and, and that's what you want to become is it because if you need to tell them, hey, I'm helping people. And that was a stat that I brought up. Um, I'm not done computing it yet, but I've helped the county over the last year get back over three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in old taxes hmm. by rescuing these houses that had delinquent tax bills on them. So as one person in the county, I helped the cap- get over a quarter million dollars back that they were owed to. Dude, you want to know what pops in my mind? Like, I, of course, I'm, I'm the marketing. Like, I, my mind always goes toward marketing. As soon as you said that, I'm like, dude, that's a newspaper article right there. Like, pitch that exactly. thing. To the, the Dude, pitch that thing to the newspaper because that's something that's like, hey, here's this private citizen that does something that no one else would even think that anyone would want to do, which is get the get get your government more taxes. Like how this guy has <laughs> has helped, you know, has helped claim blah 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 in taxes for the like ah oh, that, dude, that's such a cool story. Pitch that thing, man. Pitch it. I you know I'm, I'm going to take it a step further. We were you know we were just doing that, so I'm going to do it. But you uh-huh. when you pitch it to people like that, especially you're going into the tax office or you're going to the, the county's office, mm-hmm. they they get paid by county taxes mm-hmm. or state revenue. Yep. So if you're saying, listen, I've helped bring back over three hundred grand worth of the old tax money, that you know you can imagine what that could do for a city. Mm-hmm. It doesn't sound like much, but one guy is doing that, and Dude. we you know we help. And that's one of our story headlines because my marketing brain turns on too. next yeah. year. I want to I want to help get back a million dollars in delinquent taxes to this to the city. <laughs> Dude, I love it. man. That, so that right there is going to be such a great like get it in the newspaper because that's going to be a great backlink to your website. It's going to help all that stuff. Oh, man. Like that's such a cool hook. I love it. Oh, man. I'm, I'm going to take that and do, do something with it, man. I love it. So. Next to so you, you broke down some of your process there. I love the stacking method. So do you, do you call it you call it stacking? Is what you call it? Right? I kind of just learned that this weekend here at this mastermind. Okay. People gave it a name. I didn't. I didn't have a name for it. I was just you know put cross references that what I was calling it. Dude, I love it stacking. So we'll go with it. So the stacking yeah. method. Take that stuff. You use the data. Go build relationships at your courthouses. Mm-hmm. Uh, pick up the phone. Call people. Put out bandit signs. That's what you're doing. But calling people. You're doing that a lot. Um, what are you doing at the web? So you're doing pay per click. I, I popped into the back of your your Cash Homes Triad site, and um, one thing that actually surprised me. So you, of course, are getting some really good organic search right now. It looks like. So I'm not sure what search phrases you're you're pulling in for. I mean, you have. I'm, I think I'm one or two organically in my market. Nice. I love it. And yeah, you've got hundreds of leads in there. Uh, Twelve leads this week. It looks like some of those are step one and step two. So they're not all. You know. It's not all unique leads there. Um, what are you finding with, with the online side of it is working for you? And what also struggles did you have kind of ramping it up and get to the point you are? I was so against PPC because I didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. So I bought a course to learn it. I mean, that's that's really the end of the day. I was like, you know what? I, I got to learn this thing because it's such a big part of my business. Mm-hmm. And uh, Working with Adrian, you know, Adrian lives in North Carolina too, but yeah. working with Adrian, uh, from care, you know, I've been able to kind of, you know, narrow some things down and like, you know, really figure it out because it, it it's it, if you don't learn it, you're going to always have to outsource it. But once you learn it, mm-hmm. I spent 20 minutes a day on it, if that just going in my PPC and checking to make sure things are good. No outrageous numbers or bad CTR click through rates and stuff. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's it becomes simple once you take the weekend to learn it. <laughs> yeah. So what kind of what kind of results are you getting from pay per click? Because we'll get people too that'll email us and say, "Hey, well, you know, I just want to do organic because I've heard I've heard 
you know, I've heard pay-per-click is expensive. Well, it's all relative, but Mm -hmm. are you getting a good ROI with it? Is it something that you're wanting to ramp up? Kind of where are you with it? It's almost like a secret, man. (laughs) I don't even want to tell people, but I'm paying $66 a conversion. Yep. You know, and for me, through the pay-per-click side, it's every one, every four leads, one is a deal. Really? Dude, that's... So, yeah, hmm. every four conversions, I'm getting a deal out of it. Mm-hmm. So, I don't need I don't need a ton of leads because I, I eliminated a lot of the keywords that weren't bringing me stuff in that made, like, clicks. I don't care about clicks. Yeah. I need conversions. Yeah. And then I need to look at how good the conversion is, mm-hmm. right? You know, just for example, sell home was in my bra, is, was in my phrase type. And I was getting about 200 uh, impressions a day and about 17 clicks. I said, like, that's way too much. I know that's not cool. <laughs> so the click-through rate was great, was good. It was about 4%, which is up double what most people get. But then the conversion was, the conversion wasn't good. It wasn't good leads. Gotcha. So I kicked it out. Yep. So it sounds like you've got conversion tracking turned on in that AdWords, that AdWords mm-hmm. campaign. So you can see all the way through on each keyword what's working. It's, it's more simple. I promise you guys, I'm not a genius when it comes to this stuff. If you go just Google AdWords, how to add conversion tracker, you basically go to the thank you page at the end of the conversion cracker and on, and on care. And then you just basically insert the, the code they give you and that's it. You press save <laughs> and you go turn it right and 24 hours is active. Yeah. And that's, that's that stuff we can help with too, right? So if you guys are listening to this and you're a Carrot customer, just come to care and we can help you do that stuff. And you've got, you've got to have that data because like Max is saying, we have so many people who dumped four grand or whatever it is in pay-per-click and we're like, sweet, well, what's working? They go, well, I don't know what, which ones are working. I can, well, this one's working, but they base it off of what, how many gets clicked, not what actually performs. And like you were saying, the SEO part is important. So you need to be doing that along with doing PPC. And mm-hmm. matter of fact, I'm in this mastermind, the number, the number one ranking guy in Los Angeles and Los Angeles County is a care guy. Yep. And he mentioned you guys and he mentioned Adrian and this was yesterday. He was like, listen, Adrian had me going and was like, ah, and, I'm, and he's like, listen, about two years in it overnight, it just turned on. I was like, oh, wait, I'm number one. And <laughs> if you're dominating Los Angeles, you can imagine his numbers. Yep. No, that's yeah. cool, dude. Man, I, I, I could talk about the Legion side of all day long, but the thing I, the thing I love digging into is, is the story once again, because we've got all kinds of training in the lead gen stuff. If you're a Carrot yeah. customer, we've got, we've got all of it there. Come reach out to us. Um, I guess closing this loop in my brain on this side of it, because um, one thing that uh, Tom Caffarelli is Boston's number one home buyer. I had him on a podcast about a month ago where he really broke, broke apart how he spends a million dollars a year in marketing and how he's the largest home buyer and he's got a, a real estate brokerage of 200 agents too. And he's spending more than anyone else for a lead, but he's able to profit more because he can take it to the brokerage side and to the investment side. Um, But the thing that he said was a key to his online marketing was he was using a custom set up website that he, he has all the money. Like he can hire anyone to do this stuff. He, He nets over seven figures a year. So he had a custom site. People were telling him, man, you need to try this carrot things. It's, it converts really, really good. And he's like, it can't convert that good. And so he just kept on telling people, I'm just going to, I'm going to split test it. So he split tested them and he said on that podcast that his leads for his site doubled uh, overnight. Now his site looked pretty, but it was set up really bad for the conversion. So as soon as I saw it, I'm like, dude, this is not going to convert well at all, but it looks pretty. And so why did you go with Carrot? Um, you, you have some sort of technology background in there. You could go set up a Wix or Weebly or probably your own WordPress site. What'd you go with Carrot for? You know, the, the first, number one, to be honest, it was the ease of setting it up. Mm-hmm. To know that I could have a website up in 24 hours was great. I can build my own WordPress. It'll take me a week, yep. right? But is it just an information site or is it is, is it an information site that converts well? Mm-hmm. Right? And that was when you looked at the front page and I, dude, I, don't, I didn't know much about converting. I looked at the front page and I was like, why is, why is the filling form the first thing you see? Mm-hmm. That's the, what we wanted to do. Yep. So it makes sense now that I've been doing it. I've been a member for a year now. So it makes sense. It makes sense that, you know, to do it. So care for me was a no brainer. And anybody that asks about care when, you know, in my the real estate groups we do and stuff, it's like this, you have to do it. Mm-hmm. And I know it might seem like everybody has a care website in this business, but it's a reason why everybody has a care <laughs> website. Think about it, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's why I went with it. Sweet dude. So, so as you're, as you're going through doing the Instagram stuff and you're kind of charting that story, what are some of your favorite, 
um, things, favorite stories over the past year, just in you, just work in the real estate business that are funny or just some of those things that your audience has kind of lit up about? Well, I don't know if I can really put like put it on one, but this mm. year alone, I've helped three people get their first deal. Dude, that's and that's cool. like that's gratifying, you know. And it's like yeah. then they believe, yep. and then who knows who they turn around and help. Mm-hmm. You know, it was one more person. But I just love like being able to be outgoing on Instagram. I've come out to Arizona. I, I met a private pilot. He took us out to the airport yesterday, which I'm a pilot as well, but he's a jet rated pilot. Yeah. He took us out there showing us some Challenger jets, you know, $20 million jets. I'm in the hangar looking inside. <laughs> so, you know, just meeting people. I was at the, I was in Phoenix last month as well. And people come up to me, look, I really appreciate what you're doing on, on YouTube. And I'm like, wow. I mean, that's just gratifying itself right there. So just knowing that what I'm doing, people are actually listening and, and paying attention to it. And I'm not saying I'm a guru, because I'm growing, I'm still growing. I'm not on the level of Sean and Justin and Ken and these guys that are doing millions of dollars. I'm just a little old guy trying to get to a hundred thousand dollars a month and I'll scale from there. Yeah. Dude, the funny thing is, so you mentioned, you mentioned Sean and Justin and Kent, those guys are the head of the, the mastermind you're in right now, the boardroom. And I've known those guys for years and years and years. And the funny thing is like, when you get to know someone, you get to know someone behind the scenes, you know that they're on their own growth journey, their growth path too. And so, you know, we're, we're, we all go through our own, our own struggles. Uh, you know, that's why I shared a lot of my stuff here in the podcast, because while it might look, it might look one way from the outside, like, dude, we're on our own growth path. And that's, that's, yeah. that's, it's so powerful to take it out from behind the scenes and go, okay, let me share you my struggles. Let me share with you the wins. Let me share the things that are going through my brain right now. And it's so powerful. And once you hit the hundred K, which you're going to hit the hundred K once you hit that, um, and let's say, even if you're going to do, even if people start to paint you as a guru, like it doesn't matter as long as you're sharing your story. That's the thing, dude, the gurus, they, they have the sales pitch, sales pitch, sales pitch, sales pitch. They're not sharing the behind the scenes. They're not transparent. Yeah, that's true. And you know, I, I was talking to Sean yesterday in the mastermind, just really seeing that, okay, he was like, man, I'm trying to get my marketing budget under control. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm looking at him because I looked up to I look up to him, and I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, cool. I'm glad you know you're struggling too. <laughs> exactly. We're all on the struggle bus. <laughs> exactly, man. That's so cool. So, what do you think? And kind of casting out there a little ways. So, once you hit the 100k um, mm-hmm. a month, what do you think is going to change? What do you think your next? What do you eye in next? So, we're. T- it's funny. So what I want to do is hit the hundred K two, two months in a row. Yep. And then I can say, okay, it's real. Yep. And I can say, no, you know, we, we know what we're doing. And my thing is just to steadily put another number in front of me and go for that number and grow the team. And, and then, you know, we're in the middle of North Carolina and just kind of grow out and be North, North Carolina's number one buyer. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, do that for, there's enough money for every, everybody in that, but I want to be number one. That's yep. kind of my ultimate goal. And then obviously, you know, multifamily and you want to get into stuff like that because you want to get that passive income. But, uh, you know, a couple of buddies of mine that are in this business, um, you got Brent from South Carolina. He was on my podcast and mm-hmm. a guy from Mississippi called Big Sip. Yeah. Um, he is where we came together and we decided because we've all helped people get their first deal. I think the total of we've helped eight people get their first deal this year. Mm-hmm. So we're doing this thing coming up where we're going to put out a, a, a video and we're going to say, listen, we're going to fly to any city Hmm. in the country and they have to sign up and figure out, we're gonna pick one person, we're gonna fly to their city and we're gonna document the whole thing and we're gonna give ourselves 72 hours to get a deal and get it closed. (laughs) That's awesome. So so we're gonna gonna pick anywhere in America, Mm -hmm. city, drop ourselves in, find that person's first deal, get it and sign to a buyer and see and see if we can challenge ourselves to do it in 72 hours and i think with our u- unique personalities and strengths yeah i think we can do it so when are you guys doing this so that we're shooting that promo video um this week and, okay. and next week and then um we're going to launch it before the end of the year and let it carry into the new year mm. and we're gonna pick somebody it's gonna be interesting i would love for the challenge dude when, when, when you do that let me know i'll share the heck out of it because that that's okay, stuff for cool. me it's like <laughs> you know uh was it I think his name is Roger Bannister. He's the dude who did the four minute mile first, right? And this is definitely an overused um, analogy, but so that right there, what you guys are doing 
is you're, you're helping people mentally break this four minute mile in their heads where mm -hmm. they've got this whole path lined out in front of them mentally. Oftentimes, if you're struggling through it is this is months and months and I've got to research for this amount of time. And I've got to do this. I've got to do this. And you're going in going, OK, we're coming into a new market. We don't know. We're going to take mm -hmm. our knowledge, which you can just learn that fast and bust through that stuff. We're breaking the four minute mile mentally for you guys. Dude, that's huge. That's yeah. Huge. And, and it's, it's going to be a challenge. I mean, we we know we can do it, but let's let's like actually do it. You know, so it's going to be interesting. We're, we've, we've been talking to people and slowly like I do my Instagram live. So I've been letting people know, hey, we're, we're up to something. Yeah. yeah, it's coming. So this is the first time like we're really putting it out there. And we're like, so it, you, it's going to be a first there, but we're going to drop the promo video pretty soon. Sweet, dude. Make sure you record everything like you probably already have it, but get the cameraman there following you yeah, guys the we, whole time. Yeah, we, we got a camera guy coming along with us to make sure everything is documented. I think it'd be interesting. I love it, man. So. Your, your next step, your next phase, you're, you're going to keep on growing this business. Uh, mm -hmm. Where can people follow along with that story? So I know you've got your Instagram. Tell people where to find you on Instagram and your blog, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so my Instagram is is the real Maxwell, and that's everything I do. I have branding. I've found it. I've got the website, luckily. Mm -hmm. So the real Maxwell on Instagram, therealmaxwell.com slash ebook if you want to download my ebook. And then if you want to find me on YouTube, which is I'm starting to grow that. I mean, it's mm -hmm. the, 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 to think like, I don't know my stats. I looked at my stats this morning. I'm like, in the last 28 days, people have watched you 32,000 minutes. I'm like, yeah. why? <laughs> why? But that's cool. So, yeah, find me on YouTube. It's Max Maxwell mm -hmm. and I'll pop up and uh, just see some of the videos. I'm putting out a video every week. Um, I've got two type of videos. I have the vlog style where I carry the camera myself. And then I have what I call the wholesaling elite war room where I start breaking down tactics and things that I'm doing in my business that I see works yeah. and kind of breaking down deals as well too. Like saying, okay, this was a deal. We found it here. This was the lead source. This is how we did it. This is how we did it. This is what we made. Mm -hmm. So as I'm learning it, like in these masterminds, you know, some people can't afford to go into these things are expensive. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning what I'm learning and I'm trying to I'll implement it in my business and then pass it along to people that are willing to learn. And that's, you know, it'll pay itself back someday. Oh, for sure, man. I, I'm, I'm over on your YouTube channel right now and I suggest everyone right now just go, go follow Max. Go follow Max. If YouTube is your thing, go to YouTube. I just at the top type Max, just like it sounds, M-A-X, uh, Maxwell. And he's the dude that pops up there. Awesome YouTube channel. And dude, the funny thing is, so you, like you said, you just got started in the YouTube side of things. You have 326 subscribers at the time I'm saying this is going to grow. Which is crazy. It is crazy, but you, you're getting more views than you guys have subscribers by far, like on, on a lot of these videos. So it just shows people are engaging in it um, in a big way. If Instagram is your thing, I've been following Max for probably about a month, month and a half. And I always love his, what do they, do they call them Insta stories or what's the thing? That's yeah, happening? I call them Insta stories. So I hope that's what they are. Yeah, there we go. They are, they are officially now. We, we, we minted that Insta stories. So go follow those too. Cause he's always showing a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And, um, it was so funny. One day I saw him out there walking around a house with his carrot shirt on. I'm like, dude, that's so cool. He's, he's got his big old bright orange carrot shirt on walking around a house. and <laughs> Because the quality of the shirt was so good. I think it's like an American Apparel blend shirt. Yeah. And Adrian gave me two of them. And I just love wearing simple shirts, with yep. the, usually with the logo on it. And I threw that thing on because I had on some – it just matched. I yeah. was like, this is it. It's <laughs> nothing planned. I just love the shirt. It felt good. Oh, uh, Dude, that's so funny. That, that's, one of the, that's one of the requirements with anything swag that we do. Um, I always get the best you can get because number one, I want to wear it and I want to actually just like wear it um, and have fun wearing it. But number two, you, you can't cheapen out on that stuff because you want people to use it. You want people to engage with it. You want people to actually Smart. feel it's of value, not just this trinket that they got that they're going to toss it over there. You know, it's crazy. Love it. Dude, so a couple more questions. And we'll, let's get back to the mastermind. But um, one thing that always creeps up to me in, in my mind because I, I really think about mission and purpose a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. Where I know when anytime we're starting a business, the revenue is oftentimes that front thing that we're looking at. And we go, man, once I hit this number, then I'm set. Right. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, oftentimes, once we hit that number, that number becomes irrelevant. And then there's this new number. And then you hit that number. Then it's like, oh, well, now there's this new number and whatever it is. So there's got to be a, another reason to grow the business. Like there's got to be something mission purpose that hits you at your core that makes you want to keep on going bigger because numbers never end. What is that for you, dude? Like what fires you up outside of that? 
the numbers. You know, so I'm I'm single. I have no no wife, no kids, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't have the most why that most people have. Yeah. Uh, for me, you know, I, I I love my family, my mother, and I I know that I want to be the one that's to be able to give her that retirement. You know, she did a lot getting to this country, and she she did a lot working very hard for our family. You know, raising five kids on her own. So I want to be the person that is able to repay repay her back. Yeah. And watch her live her later years doing whatever she wants to do. And then for myself, you know, I do want kids and a, and a wife and a family eventually. And I feel like if I'm able to do this now and, and get this part out of the way, the financial freedom part, because mm-hmm. I want to be the best dad in the world. So I want to be able to spend all the time to where my kids are like, don't you got a job to go to? <laughs> no, I already did it before I had you. So yeah. that's kind of. That's kind of my, my, my why, you know, I take care of my mother and make sure that everything is, is good for her. And then when I decide to get married and kids, I want to dedicate, I want to be a full-time dad, mm-hmm. you know? Dude, so. that's awesome. So I'm going to throw one more challenge at you here yeah. is, is this, um, cause I, I was in a very similar, uh, stage for a while. And once, once you get to an income point to where the income side of it is taken care of, Right. Where mm-hmm. it's like you, you just don't you don't look at the, you know, the right side of that menu. You always look at what you want, not the price of it. And once, once you get there and, and you're I mean, you're already there technically financially wise, but mentally, of course, you're like, well, here's this next goal and here's this next goal. For me, like I, I love working every day because I've got this mission and yeah. this mission for me is like amplifying leaders. I, I know that I know that those leaders like you out there who are out there doing this stuff, especially guys who are sharing the journey and inspiring others. Like I want to find out how to amplify you guys even more because it's, it's that butterfly effect you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. It's man. Imagine how much impact max is going to make. If I can like try to lift them up a little bit more in any way that I possibly can in whatever role that is. And then imagine who you're going to now lift up. And then that person is going to get to this point. Now imagine who they're going to lift up. And mm-hmm. just those impacts in our communities in this world it's going to make. And, dude, you're one of the guys that whether you recognize it or not or now, or bah, I can't talk, but not, uh, or, or uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I can't, I don't, I don't notice it, it right now. <laughs> I can't get it out of, my, out of my head. But anyway, man, that to me is one of the things I think you're going to really find a stride in here for the next couple of years, is, especially as the income gets higher. You're gonna be like, man, I absolutely f- love amplifying and firing these people up, inspiring people to go out there and change the way their life is. So I'm gonna throw that challenge out, out at you for sure. You know, I, I accept it. I accept it. You know, I was learning today to create a, a meetup group to be able to help reach people in my local community. Mm-hmm. So while I'm sitting in the mastermind, I create a meetup group, put in my credit card information. And so boom, I just created a meetup group like an hour ago. <laughs> so I wanna be able to help reach people in my community do what I'm doing. Yep. And you know, what, you know, Adrian, he says this thing, he says, I wanna help change people's family tree. Hmm. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah. But I get it now, you know, he wants to help. And you know, he's, hmm. he's a lovely guy. And I, you know, at the end of the day, it feels good to teach somebody to in, empower people to enable them to do something that they didn't even think they knew or had the opportunity to do mm-hmm. and, and that's kind of how it became a pilot you always look you know we go across the country all the time in planes and you don't realize that somebody fly, you're like oh man I, how's this big bird flying mm-hmm. so i took the challenge and i became a pilot to figure it out and i love it the freedom <laughs> of being able to jump in that plane and fly to the beach and be in there in 45 minutes which mm-hmm. was like a four-hour trip it was a challenge, man. I love it. So being able to enable people, I, I'll be right. I accept your challenge. I accept that. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet, man. We'll wrap on this right here. And what, what you mentioned about Adrian, that's something we talk about a lot here internally at Carrot, is the impact we all have and that it truly can change people's family trees for generation. And uh, I, I so love that Adrian's out there living it. I love that you're out there living it. And just remember that every everyone listening to this episode, li- remember that every interaction that you're having in the day-to-day can either inspire someone or can or it can put down someone and just make sure to make those conscious decisions to be the one inspiring to be the one helping to shape those those thoughts in the right way and if you're like max out there helping people to start a business that's possibly going to change their family tree forever because now their kids look at their mom or dad and go hey now i have a new i have a new picture of what's possible in the world because of what you did and that starts with you man so congrats on what you're doing max keep it up dude Uh, any parting words for the audience here you know, I just want to say that if you're watching this and you're 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 stuck and you're wondering how to do it or how to move to the next step, 
man, just do it. Because mm. if if I can do it, anybody can do it. You're gonna you gonna, what they say, fail forward. You got this. It's easy. Mm. It's not easy, but it's it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it, it, man. Thank you, Trevor. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks, Max, for taking the time. You better get back to that mass run. Everyone, thanks for listening to this episode of the Carrot Cast. And make sure you go follow Max on Instagram, The Real Maxwell. Go follow him on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and type Max Maxwell. Follow him over there. And uh, just do what he says. He's out there hustling. He's showing his, his bumps, his bruises. But in the end, he's always got a smiling face and just really out there being an inspiration. So you guys do the same and go out there and crush it. Have an amazing rest of the week. And listen to the other episode of the Carrot Cast. If you want to listen to a recent one that's been a crazy popular one with Tom Caffarella, I mentioned, go to carrotcast.com or find us on iTunes. He's the number one home buyer in Boston. Tell us how he how he got there and how he spends a hundred or how he spends a million dollars a year in marketing and how he crushes his competition. And also another recent one that we get tons of feedback for, this is perfect timing for today in this time of the year, is um, my eight steps to success. That's eight, the eight decisions and, and hinge points I had to take in my life, up to this point anyway, there's gonna be more. This, this is a running list as we'll go. But uh, that one's a big one too, we get tons of feedback from. So have an amazing week, go out there and amplify someone else, close your first deal if you're not there yet, but whatever you're doing, share that inspiration with others just like Max does, thank you. Mm-hmm.